Hi, welcome back to the Earth Science Classroom, looking at physiography, which is in the playlist of geomorphology and Earth as a system. So this video is kind of a, a holistic view, a big view on the Earth and landforms. So what is involved in this video? So first we're going to go out and basically uh, where it came from, where it came from, this physiography, obviously what it, what it is. And obviously, how it connects to geomorphology. We're going to look at the different terms associated with this um, topic. We're going to look at uh, Fenneman from 1916, who was a pioneer for the uh, USA divisions. Okay, I'm also going to look at um, kind of like the breakdown in the details of each uh, part of this topic. Okay, so join me now. All right, so look at the first part. So what is physiography? Physiography, let's break down the, uh, the word. Physio, which comes from the Greek, which means nature, basically, and uh, ography or there, it just means like it's represented. Right, so ology is the study of, but uh, ography is like the, the picture, the the illustration, the how the landscape or the surface is represented, okay? So put these basically together and you get, you know, the how nature is presented. So certain kinds of nature in certain kinds of area. This also can be uh, termed physical geography, which is very uh, common term in England, UK, and Europe, um, not so much in uh, the US. US is more like um, physical geology or geomorphology, but uh, physical geography, that's a big term. So where did it come from, basically? Where did it come from? So maps have been, maps and the variety of maps that we experience now in the 21st century is a myriad of different ways to re represent information on our planet, whether it be state, county, territory, province, country, continent, uh, islands. You know, we can represent things in any different ways, in climate, in cities, in human population, in distribution, in animals, and ecosystems, and, and elevation, and uh, different landforms. We can have maps for basically anything you want. And the classic maps was the navigation maps, you know, purely for, um, you know, uh, investigations, location, and discovery. So the, the, uh, the time of discovery, you know, Cook, Magellan, Columbus, you know, those amazing people uh, doing amazing things or discovering things in the past. And they would make these maps on where they've been. Coastlines, the outlines, islands, continents, countries, you name it. But then, as I discuss in other videos, uh, you had various scientists. Scientists, uh, geologists, and geographers, like classic geographers. Their, their sole purpose in the, you know, 18th, 19th and obviously 20th century was purely again on discovery things like steno hutton lyle uh darwin all these other amazing scientists were discovering things about the earth's nature the processes the internal and external processes that shape our planet that create these landforms the 
uh, constructive nature of the earth with uh, volcanoes and orogeny and tectonics and and uh, Wegner and and um, Hess and all those people, Matthews and Vine, and also you see in um, the erosional cycle and the breakdown of the surface through uh, denudation, uh, weathering and uh, erosion and transportation, and they started finding these cycles and they started to look at the Earth. And collect information about the surface and the different landforms. Landforms and what creates landscapes. And a landform is a recognizable feature on the surface with a consistent or certain composition and structure and form. So it looks a certain way, made of a certain kind of rock, so the geology is a certain way, and it's definitely recognizable. And those landforms can all add up and be a collection of landforms, of similar landforms, in a certain location, and have a certain geomorphic definition. So this can create a landscape. So a landscape is basically a collection of these very recognizable landforms in the same location that we recognize as a general landscape, a mountainous landscape, uh, a plain landscape like Great Plains in the US or the Alpine region in Europe, or let's say the Appalachians or the coastal plains around Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. So those are very consistent of geomorphic uh, history and characterization. And they are easily recognizable, made up of these set or individual landforms that, again, can be easily recognized. So I mentioned the geomorphic uh, definition, but that comes into a different series. So we're looking at uh, physiographic or physiography. OK, and that can basically is just the location. Or a region large area then we can also go down and be more specific we can actually look as geologists as geographers look in more descriptive terms in the geomorphic this looks at basically the surface the landform and how it's formed its origin and tries to explain so then we get all the, the geomorphology and the science then from geomorphic description, which starts at physiography, we're looking at the surface morphometry. Or morph morphometry, morph morphometry. Now, that is really to do with the, um, the shape and the geometry of the land. And this can be broken down into pieces or sections that are uh, of increasingly more detail and, and smaller size to get a more detailed um, discussion about the surface. So rather than using a large continent, you're gonna break it down into a certain landscape or even a certain landform, a shape, and look at all these things. So looking at the uh, physiography, the geomorphic description, and the surface morphometry. All right. So in the overview, just the, uh, the maps navigation discovery was the basis before we get to these maps that we're looking at just the surface geology and surface landforms. Then we had the, uh, the, uh, the mixture of different uh, geologists and geographers um, combine landforms and landscapes into a picture, a map, and then obviously we can break it down into the basic uh, physiography, geomorphic, and surface details and go from large scale to, to small scale uh, with these maps. All right, so physiography is basically about maps, and on the, uh, the right here, you get this classic political map 
where you are looking at North America. You've got Mexico there in the in the yellow right down here. You've got the U.S., the uh, 48 states, continuous um, U.S. right here from the uh, West Coast uh, to the East Coast. You've got the Gulf of Mexico right here. Nice border here with uh, Canada. And you've got uh, you know some of some of Canada shown on the map there. So you might see some maps like that where you have these large cities or state capitals um, shown uh, the outline, and then you get this beautiful map right here. All right, on the left. Now this is going to be uh, a satellite picture um, looking at definitely landforms, looking at obviously vegetation or the, uh, the forest cover, the terrain. We can devise from this the certain climates. Now, obviously, we haven't got any kind of lines of latitude and longitude, but we can devise, we know that, you know, down here is around the uh, topic of Cancer, and up here is, is around 60 degrees north, and up here is like the Arctic Circle up there. So. We know that the basically we can derive the climates and the kind of wind patterns and the kind of uh, amount of rainfall. And we know that there's, um, you know, high elevation kind of uh, mountains right here, right here, the Rockies there and up into the, uh, the Brooks Range, the Alaska Front Range there and the Pacific Islands there. So we know pretty much a lot. We've got the, the Great Lakes right here, the beautiful vegetation up in New England and uh, Quebec and New Newfoundland, but you haven't really got um, those clear divisions, those clear um, surface physiography maps that are telling you differences. Now we know there are certain landforms are different, but it hasn't got much much uh, continuity. It's very you know it's all together. Now, this map was devised by Fenneman in 1916. Now, previously, the year before, in 1915, the U.S. wanted to organize and have a map that is showing all the landforms and how to organize now, why? Well, why do you want to organize the landforms? Well, obviously, maps uh, of the U.S. Uh, states were detailed and, and across the whole country and Canada, but each map would have been slightly different. Each state might have different um, names or terms for landforms or terrains that need to be uh, synchronized, organized, and characterized as a country. And to organize these huge landforms over a vast area was uh, was needed, was needed because of engineering, because of the American Corps of Engineers, maybe in the in, in the future, like in, looking forward uh, for the, the capital to to establish some sort of um, organization in terms of building code, buildings or where to build, how to build and why to build in certain areas. So with this map, he basically had three three levels, three orders. The first one was divisions, or sometimes called regions. Now these are the largest, and they basically covered vast areas of the very of similar. Uh, landforms of similar geologic or geomorphic uh, history and similar bedrock. So these are all bedrock, landforms, origin, and processes. As you imagine, trying to collate this was was a large was a large task. The next level of order he found. What's called provinces. Now these were one size down from divisions, and they usually were multiple principles within each division. So we're getting more detailed now. So 
So maybe looking at only a hundred square kilometers or a thousand, not a hundred thousand like with divisions. And the third one, the last one, the smallest one, was called section. And again, there were multiple sections within each province. So again, smaller and smaller detail uh, down to maybe even a single um, uh, 10 square kilometers, something like that. So again, uh, from large divisions to a broken down into each separate provinces and then each province broken down into each section. So you're getting very defined uh, physiographic and geomorphic information about the country um, and how it links into the general division and that general bedrock and process and origin. So the bedrock and the foundational geology that each division is made up of, and they are distinctly different. So there's a very large difference between division and province. And there's a small, small, there's a small difference between province and section because these are within division. But each division, each division, let's say you have the uh, Pacific Mountain Range, the blue over here, okay, versus the uh, interior plains in the green. So the Pacific um, Mountains, okay, and the coast versus the interior plains. These are all different divisions within North America, yet they are completely off, not completely, but extremely different in their geologic makeup, their bedrock, their origin, and their processes that, that work uh, on them. So there are small, small differences, but between division and division, that is the largest um, difference. And from this map, obviously, we, we use this today for uh, planning, um, environmental issues and, and, and things to think about. But really, these maps can really tell us a lot. Obviously, we look at the different environments that are within each division and uh, things like coastal marine environments, uh, lacustrine uh, environments, um, fluvial environments, uh, aeolian environments, like with the wind, glacial environments. Uh, periglacial, that is, you know, permafrost and cold areas. Uh, volcanic, hydrothermal, um, you know, is a mass movement environments that create. So these these uh, variety of environments that can be shown in this this type of map, that other maps can't do. Okay, and then this leads on to the features. So because of the environments uh, or certain environments in that certain location, you get certain features. And the features could be uh, erosional features. It could be uh, uh, depressional features like low areas, craters, valleys, ridges, um, wetlands. It could be uh, uh, water borders. So these features can be consistent with certain environments. Now, of course, we can link this up to climate, which is a very powerful driving force on everything from uh, endogenic and also exogenic uh, geogenic processes. Uh, obviously, the um, Denudation, which is weathering, transportation, and erosion. So climate plays a large part, and obviously each each uh, division, each physiographic location will have its its own uh, climate. Also based on latitude, elevation, proximity to the oceans, and continentality, and the the prevailing winds, and the amount of water vapor in the winds. But th we have a, you, can, you can mix these in as much as you want, but the classification of landscapes and landforms comes back to the division, province, and section that was formulated by uh, Fenneman in 1916. All right, guys, I hope this helps. And we'll get on to uh, uh, USA, the beautiful, in terms of the, the uh, physiographic map in the next video.